So if you got a buggy or a side by side or even an old Jeep that doesn't have AC, when the temperatures go up, the fun goes down because it gets hot and sweaty riding on the trails. I'm gonna show you a way that I found to stay cool on the trail without having to install an expensive AC system. So the way that I found to stay cool is to wear a vest that pumps ice cold water through it. Now these are nothing new. There's guys uh, doing race cars, drag racing, that do this all the time, but I haven't seen anybody use this for off-road. So the system I have here on the table is actually from Comp Cooler. I purchased this off of Amazon, but you can get it from their website as well. This whole system here costs $299. Now it may sound like a lot up front, but if you actually look at what the other companies sell these for, so there's a lot of other companies out there that sell uh, cooling vests and, and coolers that pump the ice water. Uh, but the vest that those other companies sell costs more than this whole system. Like I said, $299 for this versus over $300 for a vest from some of the other companies. So like I said, there's ice water that goes in here and I'll show you how to set that up. You've got these quick disconnects right here. They plug right up into here, and then you've got cooling tubes all through the vest here that are going to pump ice cold water around you. So this system uses a six liter ice chest that you put this massive three liter block of ice in and fill it with one liter of water. Now one liter of water is just two water bottles. That's usually what I do is I have, I'll have a couple of water bottles with me and I'll pour it in here before I go and run for the day. This right here is the block of ice. Like I said, it's a three liter container that the system comes with. Uh, fill it up with water, freeze it. Usually it takes 24 to 48 hours to freeze this thing solid. You place that into the container like that. And like I said, fill your one liter of water in there. You've got a pickup water hose here and your drain right here where it's gonna, the warm water that's come back off your vest is gonna come back into here. You've got a pump off to the side and then it's powered by a 12 volt cigarette ladder plug. Uh, plugs into the system here and then of course you've got a button right here to turn it on and off. Before I get too far into the performance on this unit I'm going to show you some modifications that I made. The first one was to remove the return tube right here. So this is where the water comes back in after it's pumped out. The second modification I made is actually on the pickup tube. So this used to come with a very long tube that kind of sat down and hung in the bottom but as the pump would work and as you drive around, you know, it would shake around, shake around. And this would actually find its way on top of the block of ice and then it would just be sucking air. So what I did was I cut it short and then I took and got some refrigerator water line. So you can get this at Home Depot. It's uh, just plastic line that's meant for your refrigerator. And then some of this amazing goop automotive contact adhesive and then glued that plastic line to the side here. And then it picks up right there in the corner. And I haven't had any issues with this thing sucking air since I installed this. So another modification that I made was adding this aerator timer uh, on the input of the power. So what it does is it actually cuts the power coming into the unit. Uh, so instead of the pump running 100% of the time, you can set it to run one minute on and run a minute, one minute off, one minute on three minutes off, or one minute on and seven minutes off. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the water to cool back down while the pump is off so that when the pump starts back up, you've got cold water again. If you run the pump 100% of the time, you'll see in the results later on in the video that the water is gonna be much warmer. Here's the package uh, that it comes with. It's a live well aerator timer. Um, and this thing actually made a pretty big difference. Now I know you're ready to see the results. So I ran an experiment to see how the system performed as the manual intends and then how I could get more out of it. So let's get to the results. The first graph here shows the control test. For this test, I ran the system unmodified, just as listed in the manual. This includes filling the ice chest with one liter of water, as well as using the included plastic container that had been filled with water, but is now frozen to solid ice. The pump also ran continuously while being powered by 12 volts. The cooler does regulate this down to 7.4 volts to match battery power options. The temperature hovered at 70 degrees for the first hour, and then dropped to the mid-60s for the next three hours. Keep in mind that for the first hour, I was wearing the vest as I drove the buggy around. For the rest of the test, the vest was hanging from the seat in the buggy. The results were spot on with the claims made by Comp Cooler. They claim that you will get three to four hours of cooling out of the system before needing to refill the ice. I was able to get four hours of 70 degree or lower cooling in 90 to 95 degree temps. Next, we're gonna get into the modified tests. These tests utilize the timer that I wired into the pump controller. 
For all of these tests, the vest was draped around the driver's seat of the buggy while sitting in my garage where temperatures ranged from 90 to over 95 degrees. You will notice that the initial water temperature is not the same for all tests. This is just due to how fast or slow I was at taking the initial temperature reading. It only took a couple of cycles of the pump to get the water down to the temperature as the initial cold reading. The first experiment was to use the ice container as described in the manual. However, the timer would be set to run the pump for one minute on and then turn the pump off for a minute. This cycle would continue throughout the test. Using the timer yielded a 10 degree difference in the water temperature for the first hour and then roughly two to four degree temperature difference throughout the rest of the test. Keep in mind that the initial 10 degree difference may be contributed to me wearing the vest for the first hour of the control test. This method allowed the system to cool between 60 and 68 degrees for five hours and 45 minutes. Here's a short clip of the sweat on my shirt before and after a run with this modification. For the clip shown, I drove the buggy down the highway and around town in 90 degree temperatures for about an hour. You can see that the only sweat that is on my shirt after the run was just what was caught in my fat folds while I was sitting down. If I were to have run without the cooling vest, there would be sweat around my neck and all down my back. The second experiment used two pieces of two pound Yeti brand ice packs with the timer again set to cycle the pump for one minute on and then one minute off throughout the test. I chose these ice packs based on reviews stating that these were the longest lasting of similar ice packs. The results show similar performance to the bare ice block with the one to one timer for the first hour. However, after that, the temperature is back up to 67 degrees after only a total test time of one hour and 45 minutes. Not what I expected from the longest lasting ice pack. From here, I moved into testing with the bare ice block. To run these next two tests, I filled the container with water, froze it, and then removed the ice block so that I was placing the bare ice block directly into the water instead of an ice filled container. The first ice block test was with the timer again set to cycle the pump for one minute on and one minute off. Placing the ice directly in the water yields a huge temperature drop over the control. The water was at 39 degrees for almost two hours. The ice was fully melted by two and a half hours and the water temp rose to 55 degrees. To try and get a little more runtime out of a bare ice block, I changed the timer cycle to cycle the pump for one minute on and then three minutes off. Again, the water kept at 39 to 40 degrees for almost two hours before it started to climb. By two hours and 50 minutes, the water had climbed to 44 degrees. And by three hours and 40 minutes, the ice was fully melted and the water was at 60 degrees. While it did take longer for the ice to melt with the 1-3 timer, in my opinion, there isn't enough gain to justify it. I wouldn't want to wait for three minutes between cooling cycles of the vest. Now for the last experiment. I wanted to look back at using ice within a container, but I wanted to try and reduce the size of the barrier between the water and the ice. To do this, I filled a one gallon plastic zip bag with approximately three liters of water and then placed that zip bag inside of the same three liter plastic container that is used to make the ice block and then froze it. I did this because if you were to just lay the zip bag in the freezer, the bag would freeze to a size that is too large to fit within the ice chest that this system uses. I ran the test with the timer set back to cycle the pump at one minute on and one minute off throughout the test. The zip bag of ice did yield better results than the plastic container full of ice. The water was at 53 degrees for an hour and 10 minutes before rising to 57 degrees and slowly creeping up from there. During this experiment, the water stayed below 60 degrees for almost five hours. So what performed better? Well, that's up to you. Here are the top contenders all on the same graph. Running the system as described in the manual will give you around four hours of cooling time in 90 to 95 degree heat, but it is only cooling down to 65 to 70 degrees. You can lower this temperature by using a timer to cycle the pump on and off while using the included ice container. Now, if cold is what you're looking for, the coldest water was achieved with a bare block of ice, but you're only gonna get around two hours of actual cold time. So what do I choose to use? Well, for my use, I choose to go with the zip bag of ice. Real-world testing on the trails shows similar cooling times to what was achieved in the garage. I did not confirm temperatures during the trail use, but I could feel a noticeable cold for about four and a half hours as the pump was cycling on and off. Now, the zip bag is not without issues. I have noticed that by the second refreeze, the bag will spring a leak. This isn't a big problem, but it means that you're going to be filling up your ice chest with additional water as the ice melts. A potential workaround for this would be to freeze the blocks of ice with the included 3-liter container and then placing those bags of ice in some type of larger zip bag. I did find a two and a half gallon option for a zip bag at Walmart. So what do you think of those results? Is the $300 worth it? I think it is, but 
if you're like me and you really don't want to lug around extra ice to keep the system nice and cool, well, you're going to want to stay tuned for an upcoming video because this right here is going to mean that we don't ever need ice again. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see some more content, especially if you want to see what that thing is.